Table Science Student Loan Bill, FG increases electricity tariffs. FG increases electricity tariffs across Nigeria by more than 200%. And in doing impeachment proceedings, proceed with Governor, Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu in focus. On the front scene, new Senegalese President Basio Fire appoints his accomplice or ally, Sonko, as Prime Minister. And Egyptian President Fatal RCC has been sworn in for another term. Those are the headlines uh, from Nigeria and around the world. Tonight on Politics HQ, Kaduna State has joined the arena of political battles going on between political godfathers and their godsons across Nigeria. Well, where will this Erufai Edubasani fight or feud lead? I will discuss this ahead on the program. Please stay with us to find out. You're welcome. All hell has been let loose in the politics of Kaduna State. Uh, that's in North Central Nigeria, or Northern Nigeria, rather. Uh, it is a script uh, uh, that even the most skillful Nollywood writer can't or wouldn't think of. That's right. Uh, it all began with the governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani. He's the new governor, by the way, uh, announcing that he inherited a huge debt, uh, a debt burden of 587 million U.S. dollars, 85 billion billion Nigerian now, and 115 contractual liabilities from the immediate past administration of his political godfather and benefactor, Nasser El Rufai. That's right. And the current governor lamented that the huge debt has eaten deep into the state's federal allocation. He did this at a town hall meeting where he was to give account of his stewardship. Well, Bashir El Rufai, the 31-year-old son uh, of uh, the former governor, Nasser Erfai, born in 1992, wasted no time in tackling Governor Basani head-on after he made those allegations. Now, on social media platform, Bashir Erfai wrote, and I quote, These guys have realized that they are wholly incompetent, and the only way to mask the nonsense is to deflect. Now, from a governor that is always sleeping in Abuja to a litany of incompetent aides that were only rewarded for foolish political reasons. One would think that from all the fact allocations that these unserious clowns have changed to dollars, debt would be the least of their problems. End of quote. Well, a supporter uh, of uh, the incumbent governor of Kaduna State uh, described that post by Bashir Erufai as, quote, disrespectful and mannerless. That did not end the drama uh, in Kaduna State. A, a woman leader uh, of the Kaduna State or in the Kaduna State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, Miriam Mai Rousseau uh, was the first casualty in what is the latest Godfather versus Godson battle in Nigerian politics. She was the first casualty. Now, she was supposed to uh, uh, suspended by the party, uh, paying the ultimate price for her criticism of Governor Ubasani, who she said, Erufai, the then governor, did everything to make sure he became a senator and later the governor. Well, he was described as ungrateful. And more revelations have been emerging since then, including that of former Senator of Kaduna, um, Sheh Hussani, who has also made some interesting allegations. We'll talk about that as we go on. We want to introduce our guest tonight as we have a conversation on um, governance and accountability in Kaduna State. We're joined via video link by Ola Adeoshun. He is a legal practitioner. He joins us from Oyo State um, in southwest Nigeria. Uh, Ms. Adeoshun, it's good to have you on the program tonight. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, um, I'm sure you've gone through the text at least, or you've read, I'm sorry, watched uh, some excerpts of that town hall meeting uh, by Ubasari. Um, I mean, Ubasan was put in power, was supported by um, the former governor, El Rufai, whom he's accusing now. Did you, could you have predicted that such a, a split between the two gentlemen would have happened this soon? Uh, well, uh, for anybody who is a good student of uh, Nigeria political history, what is happening between uh, El Rufai and Ubasan is not strange. It is something that uh, some of us uh, and we said we knew it would definitely happen. It has always happened uh, 
between uh, godfathers and their various ghost forms. You have only exceptional and few cases where such doesn't happen. So it's not strange to some of us. He knew it would happen. And um, uh, that is happening this early is not also strange. Uh, understanding the fact that uh, Ubasani used to be a very powerful uh, uh, aide or a uh, very powerful uh, person close to Governor Elrupai, he has so much influence on Elrupai back then in Cardinal, for close watchers of Cardinal politics. He was more or less the godfather because he determines a lot of things that was to be done by L5 as governor back then. Uh, so it's not strange to some of us because we knew that uh, by the time L5 leaves power, he will still want to exert some power, which would not be possible, understanding the fact that uh, Obasani was always, uh, uh, was, all, was more or less the godfather back then. So it would be difficult for an L5 coming out of, out of uh, the government house to now want to exert power. It would be difficult. So some of us saw these things. Uh, we knew it's going to happen. When it would happen is what we were sure of. But we are not surprised that it's happened mm -hmm. now that it's happened. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so you saw, you saw this coming. Um, did Governor Ubasani uh, do the right thing, in your you know, opinion or estimation, by exposing or making these allegations of a huge dead burden left him by Aerofi? Well, um, I, uh, it's a matter of semantics. Uh, doing the right thing in this instance, it's a matter of semantics. And what do I mean? Uh, ev virtually everything done by El Rufai has uh, as an imprimatur of uh, Basani in it. So uh, getting all of these loans, what these loans were done with at that time, there is none that, uh, that uh, Basani was not aware of. So it is more or less... Uh, your hypocrisy for him to now start uh, shouting about talking about it. But we knew this was, I mean, uh, when it was Sheryl Fanny, recall, recall as it was Sheryl Fanny talked about this loan thing back then. People like Fanny came out to, to, to say so many derogatory things about uh, about Sheryl Fanny. So it's not strange, but it is hypocritical uh, for Obasani to now start crying wolf now about the about the huge loan body right. by the time he was to take over by the time they were campaigning he was aware of this loan he was aware when these loans were being taken they mm -hmm. weren't they weren't strange to him he wasn't an outsider in that book it was part and part but it was all right uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back to you very shortly uh Olade Oshim. we want to take a quick break and then when we come back uh, we'll continue with our conversation please stay with us Welcome back. Uh, we're still looking at the situation in Kaduna State uh, where the latest political saga uh, in Nigeria uh, has been unfolding. Nigerians have been treated to um, a series, you can call it a movie series, of uh, battles between political godfathers and their godsons. Um, River State, for instance, is one case in point. Uh, we can look at what's going on in maybe even Edo State, um, though it's not the exact same situation. And now uh, we have Kaduna State and um, allegations by the new governor who said that the man who um, he succeeded uh, left a huge debt burden amounting to hundreds of millions of U.S. dollars. And I'm talking about 587 million U.S. dollars. Well, we still have with us um, via video link joining us from Oyo State in southwest Nigeria, a lawyer, Ola Adeoshu, uh, who's been giving us his thoughts on the situation. Mr. Adeoshu, thanks again for your time. So you said you're not surprised at uh, the, um, the, the, not just the, the feud between Aerofi and, and Sunny, but how quickly it happened. And you also said, uh, gave your thoughts uh, on whether Ubasani did right. You said it's a matter of semantics, but you also said, uh, going by the revelations, the governor, the new governor, knew about the loans that were taken and they knew about the debt burden while he was going around campaigning uh, with uh, Aerofi and didn't complain then. Uh, but, but can you blame him? Um, some will argue that it is politics, and he just did what he had to do to get in the door. Good. Yes, 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 yes. He has to do what he has to do to get power. But the truth is that he was aware of this problem as at the time he was struggling to get power. Now, I've been aware of the problem. If he feels it is actually a problem, 
he ought to orderly have prepared some solutions to this problem. It's not for him to cry to the people now who were not part and parcel of those of the creation of this problem. He was part and parcel of the creation of this problem. He was part of the kitchen cabinet of Mr. Iro, right? He was part of those who were going around to get these problems. He was part of those who were justifying and rationalizing the collections of this loan when Senator Shiosani was complaining back then. So he was one of those who were uh, who were slamming Shiosani, who were saying so many terrible things about him. On the basis of the fact that Shiosani was sensitizing the people, assuming without conceding that he was not aware, Shiosani sensitized, he was one of those who Shiosani sensitized about this loan, this huge loan, and he felt it was the best for the people at that time. So he had no right. In fact, it is morally bankrupt on his part to now come out at this time to complain. All right. Would you say, would you say, um, Ola, would you say, like I was saying before yeah. we went on that, it is in the interest of the people, it is in the interest of the people that this feud is happening. If this feud had not happened and he had continued to cover the track, the shit created by the previous administration, the people will continue to suffer more for it. We have states where the previous governors or the so-called Godfathers yeah. took so much loans to create a facade of development in their states. Their successors came on board, continued from where they stopped, continued taking much more loans and putting this, the, 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 the economy of the state, the future of the state in danger, creating an impression that they are developing the so, right. I mean, because this, there was no field between them or amongst them, the people felt all is right until when the bubble would eventually get caught. So, for me, it is good for the people, for the common man all right. in Kaduna State. Okay, okay. You're, you're saying it's good for the common man in Kaduna State. Um, uh, some would argue that Kaduna State has been set with uh, security issues. Um, you know, prominent among them is banditry. Um, on the road between Kaduna and Abuja, um, you know, abduction, kidnapping of, of students from schools, and um, that this is a distraction from these important issue or issues of security, um, of peace, uh, and the economy of Kaduna State. So, are the people really, when you look at these arguments, are the people really benefiting in all of this? Yes, yes, the people are benefiting because the truth is, even if this field is not happening. These guys do not have solutions to the security problems in Kaduna State or in Nigeria, as the case may be. Recall that the security situation in Kaduna was not as terrible as this when El Rufai was there. He went to negotiate with these criminals, paid them. In fact, he announced to the world that he has paid them money. You know, with the connivance of people like Syria Ubasani, they, they, these guys were paid. And the truth is that the more you continue to pay these criminals, these criminalities will continue to abound. In fact, so many others who were not involved who want to be involved because they know that they will make so much money from it. Between you and I, if you are aware that there's a, there's a, there's a job that you can do so easily and you get hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars, irrespective of the risk involved, you want to jump into it instead of sitting there behind the camera there and doing so much and earning less. So these guys have been empowered both economically and, um, and logistically by these same people in government over the years. So, and that is the cost, the root cause of this security problem. And it will continue to grow, except something drastic is done. Right. So, whether they, as, whether they expose themselves or not, the truth is that it wouldn't change anything if, uh, as far as the security situation is concerned. That they have exposed themselves, if tomorrow they decide to fight to, to deal with this security situation, right. they'll deal with it. Um, it doesn't really many aspects. Yeah, all, 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 yes. Uh, uh, you know, the governor has um, has said that, or has been labelled rather as ungrateful. In fact, I think it's the suspended women leader uh, Miriam Mayrusa who made uh, was part of those who said that that Obasani is a beneficiary uh, of um, El Rufai, That El Rufai fought tooth and nail to make him senator by you know removing or making sure that um, Sheosani didn't return to the Senate, and also, you know, fought tooth and nail to make sure he was governor, and that the governor is just simply being ungrateful. Do you see this uh, as that? Uh, well, within the 
uh, you know, uh, yes, I tend to agree with the woman because uh, even among some robbers, there's always, there's supposed to be some degree of uh, uh, moral among them, even amongst armed robbers. So, but uh, the truth is that uh, the Nigerian political class, in reality, are worse than armed robbers. So, in terms of moral, they are worse than armed robbers. So, uh, there are certain things that some of us would, are not always surprised when it happens amongst them. Ordinarily, amongst this, amongst armed robbers, there are certain things that you don't even do. But Nigerian political class will, go, will do anything to sustain themselves in power, you know. So that's uh, we, we, we let's let's keep our fingers crossed. In the long run, we will all still find that we will still see the reason why she was like, why Ubasani had to do what he did. I won't be surprised if Ubasani did what he did uh, in a bid to call in the favor of somebody at the top. I won't be surprised mm. that uh, mm. this is happening as a result of something coming from oh, the top. I see. So maybe to make himself more relevant than they will find the final analysis within their party. So I won't right. be surprised. Are, are, you, are you linking this to Erufai's visit to the leadership of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, um, which it, seems it, to... It's not out of place. It's not out of place. It's not out of place. If, my, if, my, if what my mind tells me is what is happening, then Obasan is only, doing, is only trying to curry the favor of somebody at the top, whom Erufai seems to be negotiating against. You know, so it is not out of place that uh, it is as a result of Erufai's movement uh, trying to make some realignment and build some forces with some opposition characters, you know, against 2027. So it's not out of place. And mm -hmm. I mean, Ubasani being who he is, somebody who, know, who, who, who has gotten so entrenched in power over the years, you know, uh, it's not out of place that you want to further entrench himself uh, with uh, federal power, you know, so as to deal to, to make himself more relevant, both at home and outside, much more than uh, national Europe. So it's out of place. Um, um, I mean, ordinarily, uh, in the Upper Progressives Congress, which is a party that seems to keep everything in house, um, Europe is, is, is seen to be, or ordinarily should be seen as um, a ranking member of the party. He was part of those who, um, you know, founded the APC as a merged party of different parties. Um, how has the relationship between the All Progressives Congress at the federal level, national level in Kaduna State and Erufa, how has it degenerated uh, so quickly? All right, uh, we, we will try to get and reestablish contact with uh, Ola Deosho, who's given us some uh, interesting analysis of the situation in Kaduna State. We'll take a break. When we come back, we have more on this conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back. Our focus is still on Kaduna State, uh, where the latest political saga in Nigerian politics is playing out uh, between incumbent governor Ubasani and immediate past governor Nasser Arofai. There are different dramatist personnel in the mix. Stay with us via video link um, from Oyo State, Southwest Nigeria, legal practitioner Ola Deoshun. And joining us right here in the studio, of course, um, we have Uzona on the head of news, New Central Television. Gentlemen, good to have you uh, back with us. Um, Ola, before we went on the break, I was asking you how Erufai fell out so fast with the All Progressives Congress as it seems it is happening. He was only recently one of the uh, nominee ministers, you know, in Mr. President Tinubu's cabinet. Ola? Yes, um, it was that nomination itself. The, that, uh, that that ordinarily that led to the to the uh, crisis, uh, thereby leading to Europe's uh, ostracization from the system. And of course, Europe being being someone who understands politics and understands the game so well, uh, he knew that he wasn't wasn't really wanted. Yeah, he was actually he knew he was actually nominated. Uh, his nomination was actually a fluke. Uh, you know, with the way he was uh, rejected by the Senate, and there was no serious intervention from the presidency. We, you and I know the way things work in, at, this, at the level of the Senate, and uh, not even with this Apadio led Senate, wherein uh, whatever the president does is always right. 
you know so once the president wants somebody to be a minister that person will still do but the moment the senate rejected the five every every good student of nigeria politics will know that um, probably mr president is uh, scared uh, of uh El Rufai's person uh, getting so empowered you know and uh, recall that uh his, his original boss uh, or his two previous bosses uh, Siku Abubaka and uh, Lucia Gomba Sanjo have uh, said so much about it that every every politician that, that has future ambition would have to be careful of him. If you read about just my my watch very well, uh, you 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 understand uh, so much. All he wrote about uh, about Elfai, uh, wherein he said Elfai is only a part of the for that. Uh, President Tinubu, you know President Tinubu's project, you know his history, uh, uh, during the past year to democracy, please. You know his uh, history from 1999 to this, I mean, <laughs> within the Nigerian political set. Mm. So he knows who to keep close and he knows who to, who to leave far. He knew uh, the implication of having a five close for the election in 2023. And, oh, right. I mean, after that, uh, he felt he turned within. And uh, probably that was why he played the game. He played the smart one. He played the game. And Elvis is not a fool. All right. He understands the game very well. All right. He, he, wasn't, he was no one. So he okay. Had to move. All right. Interesting. Uh, also, no, let, let's bring you in now. Um, uh, uh, Senator Sheo Sani, um, former senator representing Kaduna Central, he has given his versions of, version of events, um, revealing the role that Governor Obasani played um, in his removal, that Sheo Sani's removal from the Senate. And it also ensuring that uh, the then governor Arofai got his $350 million World Bank loan. Now, is there anything wrong ordinarily with a state governor getting a loan uh, from the World Bank? You know what the World Bank does. Is there anything wrong here? I do not think that there is anything wrong in um, a state governor getting a loan. But what is the loan meant for? And when anybody, even an individual, when you want to um, process any loan or credit from anywhere, you also check your, um, your capacity to repay. And so when you overborrow to the extent that you didn't leave um, the running cost of the state behind, it becomes a problem. So we cannot say that there is a problem with borrowing. But when borrowing is done irresponsibly, it becomes a burden to whoever that will inherit um, the, 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 the situation or the institution or even the family. Hmm. Interesting. Um, uh, we look at the recent expose on the debt profile uh, of states in Nigeria. It's quite revealing um, and shows that a lot of states are in debt. Uh, Olad Ocean, what are your thoughts on you know, uh, uh, state governments going for external loans? Should they be allowed to pick these external loans? I remember the days of uh, Jim Wobodo, and then he tried to take a loan as governor uh, when he was governor, and there was a whole fury about it. So what are your thoughts on these increasing trends? Because it seems a lot of states are going for loans. Even the FCT recently went for, is said to be going for one as well. Well, uh, there's nothing wrong in going for loan, like, uh, uh, I don't know, as I said, there's nothing wrong in going for, for a loan, whether it's individuals or, or, uh, or government. But the truth is that uh, what's the viability of that state and at the point they are going for that loan? Then what are those loans used for? Then you look at the kind of loans you want to take. What are the interest rates on this loan? What, are, what, is the, what was the current economic situation of that state as at the time these loans are taken? What is the... What, is the what is the current capacity of the state to repay that loan when it is due? How is that loan not going to create problems for the generation yet on bond for that state? Now, uh, Obasan is crying now, not because a loans or some loans were collected. He's crying now because, according to him, those loans have hindered him from doing what he ought to have to do for the people of Kaduna State. It has affected the economy of the state negatively. Those are not 
those are not meant to affect the raw economy negatively. They are, they are meant to be thoughts that would revamp the economy of the state, revamp the infrastructure of the state, wherein which will now lead to the state making more money in the long run. So now if some loans have been taken, and those loans are now hindering the development of states, then there's a problem. Not even World Bank loan, not IMF loan, understanding where we are coming from as a people. We knew sometime ago when Obama uh, was president with the Kogi Uyala Minister of Finance, we knew how they struggled to take Nigeria and mm. the implication of most of these states out of this maddening loneliness of the IMF and World Bank. But unfortunately, those who took over, who came thereafter, as it has returned us to much more mongoose loan situation across the country, state, federal, and the rest of it. You know, and that is where the problem lies. It is not a, it, the problem is not about taking the loan, but it's about the interest rate on this, the viability of the state to take this loan. And unfortunately, this loan sharks that gives this loan will not bother about the collapse of the state. As far as they are concerned, they want to know if mm. there is okay. still some change that they will right. collect. Well, uh, interesting, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 you you've said yeah, but you both have said there's nothing wrong. I was on that. Oh no, I want to come back to you. Um, state governors really um when going for a loan, what are they using the loans for? Foreign loans. We look at the domestic debt of Nigerian states as put out by the Debt Management Office. Um, so far uh, as at um, 2023 last year, stands at 5.86 trillion naira. 5.86 trillion naira with Lagos State recording at the largest that was 1.05 trillion. These are domestic debt. What is the state government going for a foreign loan for? Um, uh, these are states that, so like you, do not even have the, um, the, the plan, the, the strategy to really milk their internally generated revenue. So the question I have for you is this. Should the states be encouraged to look inwards to try and increase their IGR rather than go out um, you know, for these loans outside the country? Kofi, I will tell you that um, it will take quite a lot, a lot of energy, a lot of um, night meetings and strategy to take full advantage of internal sources for revenue. It will be quite easy to prepare a document, approach a credit, for, a credit institution abroad and um, make your presentation and then get the money. That's an easy way out of it. Instead of uh, the, the cumbersome process of tapping into and developing the internally generated revenue sources, that is quite difficult. And, and I think that that is why many state uh, governments will easily walk into any of those uh, credit institutions abroad to get loans instead of um, developing what they have back home. Having said that, the issue of corruption is a big challenge that uh, many of the state governments or state authorities um, are confronted with because when you are, you know, mopping up funds or revenue from home domestically, there are lots of leakages, there are lots of uh, sharks lingering around, tapping into the same pipeline. I, you know, that, that's this uh, saying that um, for, for a long time is because everything that is being done in the country is said to be in the pipeline. That's why... Um, <laughs> Some, some boys felt that if, if you can only survive by breaking into the pipeline. So <laughs> it, it would take a whole lot from state governments to, go, you know, it, it's dirty. They have to make their hands dirty to identify where the money will come from, go for the money, and then deal with the sharks that are standing by to eat where they didn't sow, if I'm allowed to use that. Phrase. So yeah. I think that that is why uh, many of the state governments go for foreign loans without thinking of the effect it's going to have on the economy, particularly when they have left office, because they go and borrow and borrow and borrow. When it is time to pay, like go the governor of Kaduna State is, is screaming and shouting, many people are not, um, don't, symp don't have sympathy for him because he was part of a process during the borrowing period. He was part of the irresponsibility that brought Kaduna to where it is presently. He was part of, he was part of the people that defended the government at that time. I, I overheard um, the guest you have 
already mentioning that, alluding to all that. So a lot of people do not have sympathy for him. However, what is going on between Malam Nasiru El Rufai and his uh, godson is, is a reflection of what happens in many states where people join hands together uh, to carry out activities. And when it is time, someone assumes office in place of the other without properly considering the effect of what he is getting into, only to begin to shout and scream by the time he's confronted by the humongous responsibility or humongous dirt that they have created around jointly in, in the past. So the governor of, of uh, Kaduna State has a lot in his hands. Mm. He will cry, he will weep, he will scream. Nobody will come to his rescue. He will need to find the solution himself right. because they were all in it together. They created the problem that is facing Kaduna State presently together. Interesting. Uh, we want to take a break, gentlemen. When we come back, we'll delve into some other issues. Um, we, we will try to exhaust this particular one. For those of you watching at home, please stay with us.